What's going on guys, it's Nano back again with another video. Thanks for stopping by. And I'm gonna be doing a review on the Vivo Move Style Hybrid Smartwatch. Hybrid is the keyword with this smartwatch. And I'm gonna show it to you right here. This is that beautiful bad boy. You guys see that? Look at that. Beautiful, huh? So basically, what is a hybrid smartwatch? Let's start with that first, then let's talk about the watch itself, what I like, what I don't like, who's it for, do I recommend it, and all that good stuff. Of course, I will have it linked in the description below. You guys can find it on Amazon. That is where I purchased mine. So let's go ahead and get started. So first and foremost, what is a hybrid smartwatch? I'm gonna remove the watch out of the way real quick. So a hybrid smartwatch is a watch that allows you to not only tell time, go figure, right? <laughs> the number one most important thing about a watch, but also get some sort of notification combination with it. The hybrid aspect though, comes in when it looks more like a traditional watch than like an Apple watch, than like a Samsung gear watch, than like a Fitbit, something like that. You want it to look more like a standard watch and then you add the other features on top of it. That is what the hybrid smartwatch does. And as I showed you guys right here, there are actually hands in place. Those hands make it a standard smartwatch. And honestly, I think it looks really good. I think this looks like a good smartwatch. I'm not gonna lie, I like it a lot. And there you have it. Clean looking smartwatch. Definitely less smartwatchy than an Apple watch, than a Samsung watch. Definitely more standard watch than those devices. So now that we understand what a hybrid smartwatch is, looks more like a traditional watch, then adds the smart functionality to it. Vivo Move is something that Garmin has been doing now for several years. They've updated their Vivo Move line here in 2019. They have the Style and the Lux Edition. This is the Style Edition. The Style Edition is slightly cheaper than the Lux Edition. Well, I shouldn't say slightly because it can get up there in price. The differences are materials, band choices, this watch right here, the Vivo Move Style, I forget exactly what they call this one here, but this one comes with this kind of like blackish, grayish kind of nylon woven band. And it cost me 350 US dollars before taxes. Again, this will be linked in the description below. You can replace the bands. That obviously is the case. It looks like a standard 22 millimeter. And you can choose other encasings and other kind of look to it. Silver, more black. This is like the gunmetal, I believe it what it is. I liked it a lot. I don't care for the band. I'll talk to you guys a little bit about that here in a second. So that's what this one is. If you go with the Lux Edition, short for luxury, I'm assuming, then you're gonna find um, better materials, Milanese bands, more traditional, good hardy bands. Now, of course, that's all personal, that's all catered to your style and what you're looking for in a look, that's why they're offered. Same with a Galaxy smartwatch, same with an Apple watch, you can buy different quality materials at different price points. So, makes sense, right? So the Vivo Move does a couple things that for example, like Garmin Venu or Venu doesn't do or does that the Venu doesn't do. I uh, had the Garmin Venu, which was an OLED screen watch, standard looking fitness watch, more standard looking smartwatch, no hands to tell time, and I enjoyed that. However, I have really, really enjoyed the Vivo Move style um, to the point where um, I've gotten so many compliments on it because people see this, think it's just a normal watch. I've had actually coworkers of mine tell me, hey man, that, that's a nice looking watch. Then I tell them it's a Garmin and they're like, wait, hold a minute, a Garmin? What do you mean, like the you know, GPS company, the fitness company? I'm like, yeah, like Garmin. And then I show them what it does and then the magic begins. Now I'm gonna guys show you here and I'm gonna go pretty quickly through um, some of the screens that you can uh, see with this watch. And uh, let me know in the comment section below if there's any screen in particular that you would like me um, to talk more about and I'll definitely get back to you guys on it. Um, but here's your generic general um, feel of the watch, right? Let me zoom in a little bit. So that's what it looks like. 
standard, and then you could tell the time, right? But if you double tap it, it's actually, I don't know if you guys can see that, but if it focuses, it, it'll tell you widgets, steps, date, and then you can scroll through it. You're gonna start to see different widgets. And I know that's a little hard to see here, so I'm gonna try to show you guys here on this one here. So you've got the watch, you double tap it, and there you go. You guys see that? You can actually begin scrolling through the different widgets that you have set up on your phone. And you can customize that. And I don't know about you, but I love, I absolutely love the look of this. I'm gonna show you guys how I have it set up on my watch, but this is right here. You double tap, and that's what you see. You see the steps, you see the date. And then you can begin scrolling. Shows you steps. The hands move with the actual widget. See how that happens? Now, of course, it's not connected to my phone right now. There's your heart rate. Um, I'm looking at this backwards, probably body energy, how you feeling, other stuff. And again, I'm looking at this backwards. So you can customize those widgets. You can customize the way that looks. You can customize it to your liking, and then you can scroll through it. And it is, if I'm not mistaken, an OLED screen underneath the hands. And I don't know, but it just looks futuristic. It looks cool because you're not drawing attention with like a, a you know, right now I'm using a, a Huawei Mi uh, Fit 4 or something like that. It doesn't look nerdy, geeky, step counter. It looks like a nice clean watch, if that's exactly what you're looking for. And then you customize the widgets, you double tap the screen, you scroll through, you see what you need to see, you see your text messages, your emails, you look at your calendar, and you keep it moving. But because of that, you also have longer battery life. So now that you know what a Garmin Vivo Move style watch is, what's a hybrid smartwatch, let's talk about the things I like and I dislike. Well, obviously, I really, really like the way the interface looks. I like the way it moves and aesthetically, super pleasing, functional. I really, really like it. Now, there's been some debate whether, you know, the Garmin app itself is useful or it's not that it's not useful, but whether it's too clustered. I think Garmin is a very data heavy company. I've used Fitbits before in the past. I love data. I love stats. I love graphs. I'm really enjoying that about Garmin. So you can customize that in your app and then you can customize what's shown on your watch. And you can have as many pages as you'd like. I can have things such as how many floors I've gone up and down. I can have my calendar. I can have my messages. I don't like that when I'm using something like this. I care more about a watch, steps, sleep, heart rate. Obviously if I wanted more than that, then I'd be using an Apple watch or a Samsung Galaxy watch depending if I was on Android. I really like Fitbits and Garmin's for that reason. It gets me the things that I care about for fitness first and foremost. Then you can go ahead and change it to the point where you need more texting, you need more messaging, you need more of that kind of functionality. You can go ahead and dictate in the app. It'll then show on the watch. So again, that's a personal preference. Um, I like the way it looks. I think I've made that very, very clear. Battery life, if you guys are new to my channel, it's a huge thing for me because if battery sucks on a device, well then your experience is limited. Battery life on this so far has been very pleasant. I'm getting about three to five days of usage depending on what I'm doing with it. Am I using the GPS connected feature? Am I constantly checking notifications? Am I constantly lifting my watch to look at it? Things like that obviously impact battery life, but I'm definitely getting a lot better battery life than you would with an Apple watch. I'm definitely getting a lot more battery life than you would with a Samsung gear watch. Um, and I've enjoyed that even more than a Garmin Venu smartwatch as well. With battery life, there's also the fact that there's an independent battery mode for the hands themselves. So these hands right here, when the watch dies or it says it's a low pattern, it actually still keeps the hands moving, um, which is great, right? Because if your freaking smartwatch dies, your watch doesn't die, or at least it keeps going. I don't know how long that lasts for. 
um, but that's there and I like it and I found myself using it quite a bit, okay? Because my watch died on me one night, I forgot to charge the next night, I took it to work and I still had a watch. So that's cool. Um, I like the fact that you can actually still receive decent messaging. Um, you can't really interact with it, but you can see it. And I like the actual colors. I like the display. I like the fact that it's crisp, clean, um, and it just fades away into the background. Okay, so those are all major, major likes. Things I don't like, however, couple definitely do not outweigh the things I do like. Um, I don't like the band. That's the band it came with. It's very firm, kind of scratchy into my wrist. Of course, you can change it. You can pick other material, um, but that's what comes with the standard Vivo Move Style Edition. Don't like the band at all. I wish they gave you a bigger band. Um, I don't care so much about the quality, but I think that it's a little too small, so I think it focuses more on the small to medium wrist size. I wish that they gave you a larger or extra large kind of band, and then you can go ahead and go from there. I find myself putting on the band and then for my wrist at least, and I don't think I have a big wrist, the clasp makes it to about the second to third from the bottom um, hole right here. And I, I, I don't like that. Um, I don't know. I don't like that. Um, I don't like that there's two of these little things here. One is fixed and then this one right here just moves around. Um, I'm actually considering cutting this one off because I don't, this one doesn't serve a purpose. Um, but there you go. If you guys have any bands that you would recommend, let me know in the comment section below. Um, what I also don't like about it, the lift to view or however you want to call it, lift to raise, um, doesn't work as well as for example, on an Apple watch or a Samsung watch. Um, it's finicky. You have to do like a weird movement. Um, it's gotten to the point where like, I've, I have to think about it. You know, I'm, I'm trained now. I have to lift my wrist a certain way. Then I look at it. Then the screen kicks in. Um, you can obviously turn that off if you don't care about it. I also don't like the fact that the screen itself, like double tap to access information, that's also super, super finicky. A lot of times I'm double tapping and it's not turning on. I don't know if you guys can see that there. It turned on, but sometimes it doesn't. The swipe gestures, that's not so much an issue, um, but the double tapping to access um, that interface is, and I think it has to do a lot with how firm or secure the watch is to your wrist. If there's some give, right, a little bit of gap between watch and wrist, then that space there kind of screws that up. That's what I think, because when the watch is tighter to my wrist, that doesn't happen so much, um, but that's my experience there. Um, I wish that the watch had standalone GPS. I think that that would make it a lot more expensive, but I wish it had it. Otherwise, it's connected GPS, so you have to have your smartphone with you if you care about things like that. Um, Apple's is standalone, Samsung's is standalone, uh, the Venu is standalone, if I'm not mistaken, as well. This one is not. Um, and there you have it. Now, let's summarize this up. Who's it for? Should you get it? It's definitely for someone who wants a smartwatch but is a smartwatch first, is more fitness first, but it's more importantly for someone who wants a traditional watch and then those features. Someone who doesn't want to draw attention, someone that has a, wants a clean and simple aesthetic, that's what this watch is for and that's who this watch is for primarily. Um, price point, I think it's pretty competitive, $350 uh, before taxes. Um, you know, you can get cheaper smart bands, you can get more expensive smart watches. Um, but barely. The 350 is kind of up there because you can get a 40 millimeter Apple Watch uh, for right around that 380, and then you can get a 44 millimeter Apple Watch for about 430. That's not that much more than this. In fact, if you're all in on an iOS ecosystem or you're rocking an iPhone point blank period, then you're almost hard pressed not to get an Apple Watch because it gives you obviously a lot, a lot, a lot more functionality. Um, so that's my concern right there. You really have to be someone who likes the simple look of it, that likes that, you know, watch first mentality, um, likes Garmin's, you know, interface, and then this is for you. Or you have to be all in all fitness, but still want a watch first, um, because price kind of forces you to make a decision there. I've considered going back to an Apple Watch. I don't know if I'm going to go back to an Apple Watch. I switch phones all the time. This works interchangeably between iOS and Android. An Apple Watch does not. So with that being said, guys, let me know in the comment section below what you think of this watch. 
Did you want to get it? Did you buy it already? Are you going to buy it? Or what other Garmin or Fitbit or other fitness tracking smartwatches are you using right now and why? And like always, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. It was Nando. Peace, salute, and adios. And you already know, stay geeky like always.